The earth was covered in snow, and the snow was drenched in blood. Body parts were scattered everywhere, beyond the boundaries of sight. Even though the body parts were numerous, arms, legs, heads, torsos, there were not enough to justify all the blood, which seemed to be ubiquitous, turning everything red. Into this rode three men upon nervous steeds, two priests, and the terrible man who thought he knew evil because he had seen his own soul. In the distance they heard a savage howl, as if hatred itself had finally found a voice. The terrible man, whose name was Galene, had seen many awful things before, from corpse-strewn battlefields to torture chambers, to the grotesqueries of religion, yet this seemed somehow different to him, not so much in the degree of carnage, but in its quality. The arms, legs, heads, and torsos had been fed upon by something whose hunger was not physical. The three men moved on in the direction of the howling. To love nothing, ultimately to be nothing, that is the goal, said the one. That's just awful, said the other. Without love, life is quite pointless. The one smiled. He was a tall man, completely bald, with dark eyes and sharp features dressed in a brown tunic and pants, with a red belt around his waist for the sake of a little color. If he had a proper name, few men knew it. The other certainly did not. The one carried with him a metal staff, a bow, and on his back a quiver of very strange arrows of a rather peculiar design and metal. His face was hard, as of someone who has lived perhaps too long, but devoid of cruelty. The dreams of love are those of youth, he said, as of a dancing with beasts. As we grow, we must go beyond them, or remain mere beasts. The other, whose name was Gregory, pondered the words of his mentor, as he always did, suspecting a hidden truth somewhere in them. The one's words always baffled him, always left him questioning everything he believed in. Not for the last time he wondered if that was the one's intent, to get him to question everything, to look deeply into himself. Gregory was a tall, robust man, though not quite as tall as the one. He wore armor of Megri design, and underneath it a shirt of mail. He had red hair, a thick beard, and was very broad at the shoulders. With him he carried a shield and an axe. When does the darkness come? he asked. It's already here, answered the one. Does it lie within our power to stop it? asked Gregory. This evil may be beyond us, said the one. It is fantastic, almost impossible to even contemplate, said Gregory. Like something from an old tale, stories of men who turn into wolves Silly tales to frighten children. This is not a tale, said the one. Nor is this creature truly a wolf, or anything natural for that matter, but a terrible demon from the nether regions, who fancies to assume the form. 